This is the lesson for chapter 8, section 4, titled Multiplying Special Cases. And so we're still using the same formula. We're using FOIL to help us multiply these, these binomials. The difference is, is the way they are presented to us. So for instance, this one is h plus 3, but it's a quantity being squared. Now the typical mistake is people think, oh, okay, I'm supposed to multiply the exponents because I have an outside exponent. But that's not what we're dealing with here. See, Order of operations says we have to do work inside the parentheses. Now, if everything was being multiplied, then we could go ahead and distribute the exponent on the outside by the exponents inside. But in this case, we can't do that because of the addition. And so it says that we have to add h and 3 before we can take the exponent. And so in order to get around that, what we can do is write out what h plus 3 quantity squared means. We could write it out twice. And you see, that's what it x h plus 3 quantity squared is. It's just two h plus 3's multiplied together. And then we could just use the FOIL method. So we're just doing the first outer, inner, and last terms. Now we're going to see something special about these, at least the outer and inside terms. So watch when we're doing these, see if you can find a pattern here. So h and h make h squared for the first terms. Outside terms are 3h. And the inside terms are the same thing. See, h times 3 is 3h. 3 times h is also 3h. And that's what we're going to end up noticing here. 3 times 3 makes 9. So h squared plus 6h plus 9 is the multiplied form of h plus 3 quantity squared. So same thing here. We'll write it out twice. 5s plus 2 multiplied by another 5s plus 2. And so when we go ahead and multiply the first terms, we end up with 25s squared. Outside terms make a 5s times 2 makes 10s. And then the inside terms, we have the same thing. 2 times 5s makes a 10s. And then the last terms are 2 times 2, which makes 4. So notice how the outside terms and inside terms are the same again. And that's because we have the same numbers being multiplied. 2 and 5s, 5s and 2. So our final answer is 25s squared plus 20s plus 4. So we're going to see the, see the same thing, but the difference here is we have minus signs instead of a plus sign. So let's see what happens. So n minus 4 and another n minus 4. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I have my first, outer, inner, and last terms. And so my first terms are n times n makes n squared. My outside terms are now an n times a negative 4n, so it makes a minus 4n. Same thing here, negative 4 times n makes another minus 4n. And the last terms, negative 4 and negative 4 make positive 16. So this time when we collect, instead of being a positive number, it's a negative number. Minus 8n is what we get when we collect those two terms. But n squared minus 8n plus 16 is our answer. So in this one, 4m minus 2 and another 4m minus 2. And so when we go ahead and multiply the first terms, we end up with 16m squared. Outside terms make a negative 8m. Inside terms, they make another negative 8m. And that's what we're going to see every single time. Last terms are two negatives make a positive. So we have 16m squared minus 16m plus 4. So let's recap what's going on here. So when we've got a quantity being squared, the outer and inner terms are always the same. That's what we're going to see here. 3h and 3h, 10s, 10s, negative 8m, negative 8m, negative 4n, negative 4n. So if that's the case, the first terms are always a perfect square. The last terms are always going to be a perfect square because we're multiplying the same numbers because they are the same values. See 5s and 5s, 2 and 2. See, 4m and 4m, negative 2, negative 2. So the first and last terms are always perfect squares. So this is going to be a perfect square. And then we're going to have another perfect square on this side, right over here. These two are always going to end up being perfect squares. Now this term right here is always double the outside or inside term because the outside and inside terms are the same. So we could say double double the outside or inside terms. So either one, because these are the same. These are always going to end up being the same with the quantity being squared. And so if you notice that 
If you're always multiplying the 2 by the 5s or the 5s by the 2. So if you double this product of these two numbers, you'll get your outside inside terms combined together. So that's something you should watch for when you're multiplying quantities squared. So let's take a look at some other types of problems that we'll see. Here we just have a situation where we're trying to find the shaded region. And when we do that, we just have to take the large box, large square, and we are going to subtract the small square. And so our large one is x plus 2, but another x plus 2. And then we're subtracting out the x minus 1 and the x minus 1. So we go ahead and do some work. For this one here, it's going to be x squared plus, and then it's going to be an 2x and another 2x. So that's going to make 4x, and then 2 times 2 makes 4. So again, these make 4x outside inside terms, and we get that x squared and the 4 on the outside for the last and the first terms. So for this one, we have x squared for the first terms, and then a minus 1x and another minus 1x, and then a plus 1. So the last terms are always going to make a positive. Same thing with the first terms when it's a quantity squared, because they're either two negatives or two positives being combined. So this makes x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we're taking this expression away from the first. Now when we do that, put parentheses around it, we're going to add the opposite. <coughs> so it's going to switch all the signs. And then we'll go ahead and collect. So x squared minus x squared, those cancel each other out. And then the 4x plus 2x makes 6x. The 4 and the negative 1 make a, a positive 3. And these are units squared. And so this is expression, so it's, I'll put it in a set of parentheses and say polynomial. Now on these, this is called a difference and sum. Actually, I'm going to switch those terms around. I'm going to call it a sum and difference. Sum and difference. So it's a sum because two numbers are being added together. It's a difference because then they're being subtracted. And so when we have a sum and a difference, we're going to notice something about all of these sums and differences. So let's take a look at the FOIL method. And so I'll take the first terms, make z squared. Outside terms, z times 9 makes 9z. Inside terms make a negative 9z, so negative 9 times z, and the last terms make a negative 81. So what will happen is these two terms will cancel. See, they make 0, and so they cancel each other out. So we're just left with z squared minus 81. And this is called a difference, difference of squares. See, it's they're a difference because of that subtraction sign, and then both of these are perfect squares. See, the reason is is that you're multiplying the same numbers. Z times Z makes Z squared. 9 times 9 makes 81. So you'll notice that on all of these problems. So let's take a look at them, because they're all sums and differences. So the first terms make 25. Outside terms make a negative 5G. Inside make a positive 5G. And the last terms make a negative g squared. And so negative because the positive and the negative. So these two terms, again, they're opposite signs. They're the same number. They make 0. So we're left with this, 25 minus g squared. That's in descending order. So if I want to put it in standard form, it would be negative g squared plus 25. So either way to write the answer is fine. So again, this is a difference of squares. You can see how we've got a perfect square and a perfect square, and we are taking the difference because there's only one negative sign. So again, you'll see that on this problem as well. So the first terms make 4c squared. Outside terms make a negative 6c. Inside make a positive 6c. And the last terms make a negative 9. So when I collect these two terms, again, you see how they make 0. They make 0. They're opposite in sign, so I'm left with that difference of squares. See, one of them is negative, one of them is positive. And that's what we get, a difference of squares. So that's what we're going to see with the sum and difference being multiplied each time. Let's take a look at our last type of problem. These are just two problems in which we have more exponents involved. And so it's a quantity being squared, so I'm going to write it out twice. So p to the fifth minus 8q to the third. And another p to the fifth times or minus 8q to the third. So when there's more numbers involved that just, or more variables involved, it's just a little bit 
trickier in that we have to pay close attention to the exponents that we see. So for the first terms, I end up with p to the 10th power. Remember, you're adding up the exponents when we multiply. And the outside terms, now we'll notice that since it's a quantity being squared, they should be the same. So once we find one, the other is going to be the same. So we'll write as 8p to the 5th, q to the 3rd. So p to the 5th times 8q to the 3rd makes a negative one there. And this one's going to be the same. You see they're the same numbers being multiplied. So that's the thing that will help us when we're multiplying these. We'll know that, oh, when we've got a quantity being squared, outer and inner terms are the same. Last terms make it positive 64q to the 6th. We add up those exponents. Always going to be a positive because two negatives make a positive. So these two terms are going to combine together to make a negative 16p to the 5th, q to the 3rd. Remember, don't add those exponents, not when we're adding, only when we're multiplying. So we got a plus 64q to the 6th, and that is our answer. Well, one last problem here. It's a sum and a difference. So we know that the outer and inner terms are going to cancel out. So let's see how that happens. So the first terms make 36p to the 4th. I multiplied the 6s, added the exponents. Outside terms make a negative 12p to the 2nd q. So 6 times negative 2, p to the 2nd q. And the inner terms make another 12p to the second q, but this time it's positive because there's two positives. And the last terms are going to end up being a negative because they are opposite in sign. And so we have negative, and then it's 4q to the second. So these two terms, notice how they're the same number but opposite in sign. That's why they cancel. And so we're left just with 36p to the fourth minus 4q squared. Those are the types of problems you're going to see on tonight's assignment. Good luck.